Solo queue can be a bit of a nightmare at times, but it could be your champion that's letting you down. Maybe they're just a bit weak at the moment, or maybe they just aren't that good at influencing games on their own. Here's a quick video all about some of the best champions you can 1v9 with in Season 13, Patch 13.1b. One thing to note though is that these champions' builds and runes change fairly often, which is why you should check out our desktop app, which will keep you up to date on, well, basically everything you need, and you can import it all straight into your client. Just click the link in the description to find out more. Let's start off with our first champion of the day to solo carry with. Samira. I'm sure you've all played against a fed Samira before, or maybe you've played it yourself, so you should already know just how scary this champion can be. Samira is designed to snowball. She's designed to get stuck into teams and kill everyone in sight, and reset her way through teams and clean up her easy pentakills. Her ultimate's AoE damage and healing is nuts. Plus, she's got a win wall in her W, she's got mobility in her E, which resets every time you get a takedown. And aside from that, she's just got a lot of extra burst. Samira has a pretty solid lane phase. She counters so many different marksmen because her W blocks all of their damage. And if she does get the lead in the early game she's going to have a bit more damage she's going to have a bit more experience she can literally just flash onto them and one shot them and if you're partnered up in lane with an aggressive cc heavy support like nautilus or rel then you just can't go wrong seriously though if you support bix nautilus why aren't you playing samira the big AD carry item changes have only made Samira stronger too. And if you get that mythic item, you get that infinity edge sooner rather than later, you're just going to roll all over the game. Next up, we're going up to the top lane. And of course, it's going to have to be Jax. Now, despite a few of his items being nerfed recently, Jax didn't get nerfed himself. And if you've played any game of League of Legends since Jax got reworked, you probably already know just how strong he is. Solo carrying games from that top lane is usually all about getting a lead, keeping the lead, becoming unkillable and split pushing your way to victory. Or if you don't want to split push, you just walk into the enemy team when you've got 5 levels on them and one shot every single one of them. Jax is not only a fantastic duelist, but he's also so good at dealing with stacked up teams too. I mean, he can literally stun every single one of them if they're grouped up, so what's not to like? And in the mid to late game when you've got that Spear of Shoujin, now you can basically just stun people every few seconds. Oh and by the way, they can't actually attack you whilst you've got your E active. Solo carrying as Jax is going to have to come down to learning those matchups though. After a good few games, you should know the majority of them, and then when you do, you know how to win those matchups, and if you win the lane, you're probably going to win the game. Jax is fantastic at 1v2ing the top and jungler when you've got a lead as well, so if enemies come to try and stop you, you just kill them as well. And before you know it, they've FF'd at 15. Moving on to our next pick, which is Elise in the jungle. I don't think anyone was expecting Elise to get through this patch without any nerfs, but here we are, and she's still unbelievably strong. Elise just has so much to offer even from those early levels. I mean, at level 3, she has burst, she has mobility, and she's got a stun, which makes her not not only a fantastic ganker, but also an excellent duelist as well. She can clear those first few camps quickly and then get into lanes, get stuck in and gank early and often. There is not many other junglers in the game that can get away with tower diving from as early as level 3 like Elise can. The fact that she can drop all turret aggro with her repel just means she can do this so effectively and so easily. And usually when your laners are pushed up, they don't really look too gankable. But with Elise, it just doesn't matter where they are. If they're pushing to your tower, you kill them easily. If they're stuck under their own tower, you just dive them and kill them. And before you know it, you've got a 25 stack Magi Soul Stealer. You're walking around one-shotting everybody that you come across. It doesn't matter how much health they have, you're going to shred them and melt them down so easily. Throughout the rest of the game, your job is to basically just catch people out with your cocoon, delete them from play, take objectives, and win the game this way. Next up, we're going to the mid lane with Cassiopeia. And she's been having a fantastic time ever since the buffs to Saras Embrace and Rod of Ages. There is nothing scarier than a good Cassiopeia player, and I'm sure you've all seen just how terrifying she can be to play against when she knows what she's doing. Cassiopeia has fantastic trading in the lane phase, she has solid burst damage, she has anti-mobility in her W, she has AoE CC in her ultimate, the list really does go on. But the best thing about Cassiopeia is her consistent and relentless damage output. As long as you keep applying those poisons, you can spam your E till the sun goes down. And those twin fangs seriously hurt. Cassiopeia does take a lot of practice though. You're going to be spamming those fingers on those keyboard till they're bleeding. You're going to be running around in circles, keeping on the move so you don't get caught out. But at the same time, you're going to deal so much damage and be really hard to get hold of. Cassiopeia is going to take all of the focus from the enemy team to shut her down. Because due to the amount of damage she can constantly pump out, she's just as important as killing an AD carry. Now Cassiopeia can solo carry games just by amassing crazy amounts of farm and becoming unkillable and dealing so much damage, but she can also carry games with just those big moments too. All it takes is one good R flash into a stacked enemy team and you're probably going to win the fight and probably going to win the game for your team. If you get good enough at Cassiopeia, there's no doubt you can 1v9. Next up, we're down to support, and guess what? We've got Blitzcrank. When it comes to solo carrying games in solo queue, it doesn't really matter what season it is. Blitzcrank will always be one of the best options to go for. And currently in this patch, he's back to his best. AD carries have been buffed across the board. So if you're playing Blitzcrank and shutting them down, you're obviously going to have a much higher chance of winning. If your own AD carry doesn't have a clue what he's doing, you can just abandon ship and carry the rest of the map instead. Even if the early game doesn't go too well. If your AD carry isn't doing too well, if your roaming isn't paying off, all it's going to take in one of those big late 
late game team fights is one clutch hook. If the enemy mid laner is 10 0 and you land a hook on them at the start of a team fight, your team can one shot them and you can take Baron and win the game. Blitzcrank has an amazing ability to stomp and snowball the early game, but he also has those big moments in games where he can win games for his team just with one Q. He's also someone you can pick into pretty much any team composition. Yes, there will be matchups that aren't quite as fun. I mean, if you're laying against Siv in Morgana, you're going to have a tough time landing any hooks. But it doesn't really matter too much because you always have the ability to roam and carry elsewhere anyway. He also works alongside most AD carries too. Obviously he's best with AD carries that have lots of burst damage to capitalise on those hooks, but it doesn't really matter because you're always going to be useful. If you do get good enough at Blitzcrank, be ready to farm some honour. But if you don't land those hooks, be prepared to get spam pinged a few times. Now we're going on to another AD carry and we've got Draven, the marksman with eternally the highest ban rate ever. Everybody hates playing against him and it's pretty obvious why. This champion stomps and snowballs like nothing you've ever seen before. And if you're good enough to pull off Draven and you get a few kills in the early game, there's not much your enemies will be able to do about it. The reason why Draven is so good at solo carrying comes down to how much gold he can generate by getting kills by cashing in on his passive. All you gotta do is catch those axes and get farmed in the early levels, then get a kill, cash in with the extra gold, get your first item before the 6 minute mark and roll over the rest of the game. Draven is the ultimate 2v3 AD carry. If the jungler comes down to try and stop you, you're probably going to kill them and kill their teammates too. And before you know it, you've completed three items before your enemy AD carry has even touched the first one. Draven definitely takes some skill to pull off consistently. You need to know how to micromanage those axes, you need to know how to pump out your damage, and you also need to know just how much damage you actually deal, because if you're really fed and you're not actually doing anything about it, you're not going to be carrying. But if you know your limits, you know how to abuse those limits, you're going to have a lot of fun and a lot of success if you start mining Draven. Yasuo is back to his best in the mid lane. With the recent AD carry and crit itemization changes, he really is thriving. And to be honest, he was already in a really good spot anyway. Now Yasuo is one of those champions you never really want to see picked on your team because they always go 0-10, but when they're on the enemy team, they go 10-0 and 0 in the first 5 minutes. Yasuo is a terrifying champion to play against if the player knows exactly what they're doing. So if you have got a few million mastery points on this champion, you're already probably aware just how insane he can be if you're good enough. Yasuo has tons of mobility, fantastic early kill threat, and of course AoE CC too. And if he gets one good combo off in a team fight with a 5-man knockup into his ultimate, it's probably going to win the fight. Yasuo is already a solid 1v9 champion on his own, but if your teammate has one or two knockups, it's just going to make your job even easier. And there's a few different ways you can carry on him. You can side lane and split push and out duel anyone that tries to stop you, or you can team fight and look for those massive wombo combos. And if you pick Yasuo into the right comp when enemies can't do anything about your win wall, have fun 1v9ing. Next up, we've got another support in Amumu. Now, yes, you can play Amumu in the jungle as well, but in support is really where you can just walk around the map, killing everyone without too much punishment. Ever since the change to Amumu's Q giving him two charges, he's just been a completely different champion. It gives him one of the best level 1 all-in threats from any other support in the game. And it also means that he's really good at invading and ganking other lanes really early on too. If you land the first stun, you're probably going to land the second. If you miss the first one, you got another chance at landing one anyway, so it's a win-win. Then once you get level 6, you become even more threatening. If there's an early team fight around Dragon, you can walk up, you can flash into them, you can land that ultimate, and you're probably going to get an early Dragon Soul. Even if you're having the worst game of your life and you land one big ultimate in one big clutch team fight, this is enough to impact and carry games by yourself. If you pick Amumu support into a team comp that offers extra AoE CC, AoE damage as well, then the wombo combo, the team fight compositions are just going to be mental. If you still haven't played Amumu support yet, why not? Next up, we're back to the jungle with Rengar. Now, it's pretty obvious to see why Rengar is so good right now with all those crits and AD carry item changes actually having a huge impact on him too. But even before any of that, Rengar has always been such an amazing champion to 1v9 with. But he does take a lot of practice to get right. Rengar is an assassin jungler with a pretty unique playstyle. He relies on brushes to actually jump on anyone, especially pre-6 anyway. So lane ganking, fighting in the jungle, fighting around those close confined spaces is where he really thrives. But he can't just walk around the map and gank from random areas like people like Zatkan. The thing is with Rengar though, if he does get a lead, it's so hard to beat him. Not only does he have crazy mobility in the right places, he also has a ton of burst damage, but as well as that, he's got his W, which is a cleanse. If he plays around this perfectly, he can negate all incoming CC, he can sponge it and absorb it and clear it, and then jump back on you and kill you again. And if you main any kind of squishy champion and you're playing against the fed Rengar and you don't have any protection on your team, there's nothing you're going to be able to do about it. I can't wait to see all the funky builds you Rengar mains come up with over the next few weeks. But either way, he definitely deserves a place in this video. Lastly, we have our 10th and final solo carry champion to go for this patch, which is Tristana. And yes, she can be played in both the mid lane and the bot lane. 
The fact that Tristana can now get that Infinity Edge sooner means she's probably one of the best burst AD carries in the entire game. And if you didn't know, Tristana is already an amazing pick into melee matchups in the mid lane. With her Hail of Blades, her W resets and her Q and E burst damage, she can jump onto people and kill them on repeat in the lane phase. She tears through plates super easily with her bomb and Q as well. And this means she kills you and she accumulates such a massive lead super quickly. If you get fed on Tristana, you're going to have a ton of fun. You can jump around everywhere, one-shotting people, pushing people away if they are any threat. And before you know it, you've taken four towers and a dragon before your enemy mid laner has even hit the 50 CS mark. We definitely expect a lot of people to be playing Tristana in patch 13.1b. So whether you main mid lane or AD carry, make sure you're not forgetting about this crazy pocket pick as she could be your ticket to that next ranking tier. That's going to bring us to the end of our choices for some of the best 1v9 champions you can demolish solo queue with this season so far. Let us know in the comments who you're having the most success with. Thanks for watching guys and as always, take care.